uh, in the book of Romans, Romans chapter number 12, uh, let us begin to read at verse uh, number 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your, your reasonable service. Verse 2, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. We are in lesson number three. I am teaching from the subject, hold your, hold your, your peace. Paul said, it's your, the least you can do is present your bodies uh, a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God. That's the least uh, we can do. In other words, the church ought to look different than the world. The church should never look like the world. Uh, we should never blend into the world. The Bible says that we are the light of the world. We are the salt of the earth. In other words, if you take us out, it's total darkness. But when the church starts to look like the world, we got a problem. We got an issue when the church continues or, or is no different than the world. In other words, we ought to get along with each other in the church. That there should not be any schism in the body uh, if we're serving the same Lord. The last time I checked, there's one God. There's one faith. There's one baptism. There's one spirit. The spirit is not going to tell us two different things that do not line up with scripture and with the will of God. Can we say amen to that? And so there's a problem in the, in the body of Christ right now that's ringing in all of our spiritual ears. I mean, it's, it ought to be just a five-star or a five-alarm fire uh, alarm in our spirit uh, when we see and hear and, and monitor what's going on in the body of Christ here. Can we say amen? Can't speak to no other country. I'm talking about right here. And so in Romans, it says in verse 2, now be not what? Conformed. In other words, don't try to act like the world. The Bible says be, in, be ye in the world, but not what? Of it. We can't help but be in it, but we don't have to be of it. And But you got to now be ye what? Transformed. We get into the root now. By the renewing of your mind. Stop trying to renew your neighbor's mind. It didn't say that. It says you need to renew your mind. And it doesn't say renew it one time. Some of us got saved 20 years ago and stopped renewing our mind. Come on now. We, we, we stopped growing. Because I've heard Romans 1, 12, 1 and 2 before. We stopped being transformed because uh, we thought we were good uh, already with the Lord. But he wants to take you to another level. As a matter of fact, I'm here to, to, today to tell you somebody's up for a promotion. The only thing that's standing in your way is your mind. But, but God, God told me to tell you today, uh, the promotion is on the way. I just need you to renew your mind. I need you to change your thinking. Amen. And he says, listen, I need you to do that so that you can prove what is that good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. 
so, so the world needs evidence. It needs proof of who you are, and we provide that proof by renewing our mind, by not being transformed. And so here's the question of the day. Write this down. Underline it. Is my attitude the problem? Is my attitude Is my attitude the problem? Amen. But we good at identifying. We, we, <laughs> we have become experts at identifying the problems with other people's attitude. Now, I'm going to raise my hand <laughs> because I can get one pretty quick. All it takes for me is to just get in the car and drive. Because, listen, I'm here to tell you some folk ought not to have license. Come on, somebody. I mean, you listen. You don't have to listen. You don't have to stop to turn right. If there's no stop sign there, just turn right. You ain't got to stop. Take five minutes and then turn. Especially when I'm behind you. Come on, do that with somebody else behind you. But I can get an attitude like going to a cowboy game. And you don't listen, you don't spend some money to get there. Then you got to you got to pay for parking. And then you get heckled walking in when you got your jersey on. We at least want the team to compete. Can you get out there? Listen, just keep the score close. And when that don't happen, I can tend to get a. <laughs> so is my attitude. Is my attitude the problem? So I may need to hold my peace because of my own attitude. Amen. You know, we counsel a lot of couples, and um, I can tell how it's going to go just based on... <laughs> when, when you've been married 10 years, and you call her she and her, and you call her he and him, rather than my wife or my husband, then I already know you got an attitude. Because you talking about her and she and he and him like they strangers. Y'all been married 10 years. Y'all got children together. Are we all right? Antioch Christian Church. Um, and so we're going to talk about our attitude uh, in this, uh, this particular lesson. So let's define what well, pastor, so that we're all coming from the same place, what is an attitude. And so the word attitude, and, and, and while, you, while I'm reading this, I want you to turn to um, um, uh, Romans chapter, well, we're in Romans chapter number 12, right? 
Uh, so I want, you to, I want you to turn to Philippians chapter 2. And we're going to read this in a different uh, uh, translation because when you read it in this translation, it, it, you can see it a little different. Uh, the word attitude, it means a feeling, a feeling, which ought to jump off the page at you, or a pattern of thinking that affects a person's behavior. behavior. It's a feeling or a pattern of thinking that affects a person's behavior. So don't think an attitude is innocent because an attitude is going to affect the way that you behave. Some attitudes are so toxic, toxic, uh, and, and it, of course it's contagious, and so it spreads, and it can infect a whole congregation. It can infect a whole nation. And if you you don't believe me, read Numbers chapter 13. When when God had sent the 12 spies out, he chose 12 leaders. Leaders, listen to me very carefully. Your attitude is contagious. And and we're going to see in a minute, you only have one or two. It's either, your, your attitude is either right, Oh, it's wrong. It's either good or it's bad. And so there's no in-between attitude. So what are you spreading with your attitude? Is it something godly or ungodly? And so he he sent 12 leaders out to spy the land. He told them earlier, he said, I've already given you this land. It's flowing with what? Milk and honey. So go spy the land out. So they go spy the land out. They come back. Boy, they got all kind of fruit. They got all kind of uh, produce. They got, the, they got the milk and the honey. And they come back to report to Moses. We found the land. Surely it's what? Flowing with milk and honey. But. There are some giants in the land. We saw the sons of Anak there. The Amelianites dwell in the south. And, and, and we, we, they're, they're giants and we were grasshoppers in our own sight. Caleb sensed an attitude change. And he stood up and still the people, what's wrong with y'all? God promised us the land. If, if he promised it to us, it doesn't matter who's in there. And so we are well able to take the land. So if God is on our side, they ain't nothing but pray to us. I don't care how big they are. So let's go take the land. So you had two, Joshua and Caleb, uh, who believed the word of God. And then you had 10 who started, who started spreading the attitude that they had. So don't tell me that an attitude is not contagious because those 10, they contaminated the entire congregation. And the entire congregation, they wept and began to start not holding their peace. (laughs) And they started saying, would to God, that we would have died in Egypt. That we would have just been slaves in Egypt. Then to come out here and die and perish in this wilderness. It got so bad and so tense that they say, God, we don't trust you no more. We don't trust you anymore. We're going to choose our own captain. We're going to raise up our own captain. Because Moses surely ain't the one. 
Not only are we going to raise him up, but we're going to stone Moses. We're about to kill him. That's when God showed up. Put a stop, put a stop to everything. And so I just want you to understand how important your attitude is. And we, we all can be touched with this message. Every last one of us. And so have y'all, have y'all found uh, Philippians uh, chapter number two? So is my attitude the problem? Um, before we read uh, Philippians chapter two, write this down. This is a, I don't know if I gave this to the, uh, to the team, but I want you to write it down. When conditions change, our attitude should not. When, let me say that again. When conditions change, our attitude should not. So, so the conditions had changed. But my attitude can't change because of the conditions. I'm here to tell you conditions going to change in your life. Conditions are not going to stay the same. I remember when COVID hit. Let, let me tell y'all something. When COVID hit, um, and, and, and everybody in my family was living in my house. The, y'all supposed to be gone. Everybody in my family was in my house. And we had a dog. And my wife, uh, my daughter and her husband brought two dogs home. So I got everybody in my house, in my family, plus three dogs. And one of the dogs is bigger than me. <laughs> Y'all don't know the McGills, we ain't dog folks. And so we got three dogs in the house. My wife is about to lose it. Tell somebody, conditions change. She would ask me every day, where are you going? <laughs> I'm going to find something to do outside, outside the house, so I, I'm going to leave and come back later. I left every day. Brother, I, I went fishing, found me a park, got listen. What happened? Conditions had changed. But now, my attitude has to remain the same. So when the conditions change, my attitude should not. Well, I was giving y'all time to get to Philippians. Y'all there? Uh, So let's start reading at verse uh, number one. Is there any encouragement from belonging to Christ? Any comfort? This is the New Living Translation, by the way. Okay, great. Any comfort of his love any fellowship together in the spirit? Are your hearts tender and compassionate? Ask yourself that question. Then make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, loving one another, and working together with one mind and purpose. Look at verse 3. Don't be selfish. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. We talking about an attitude now. He said, be humble, thinking as others as better than yourselves. We talking to the church now. Don't look out for your own interests but take an interest in others too. Verse 5 is where we normally begin. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. That's why I wanted it to read, read this in, uh, in this verse. Because let this mind be in you. Right? The old King James. That word mind means attitude. Let this attitude be in you. 
And so he said, make sure that you have the same attitude that Christ had. You mean Jesus had an attitude? Yes, he did. He's telling you right here. Though he was God, he did not think of it of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. Therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue declared that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And we love reading that, right? I love reading it. I love, I love preaching it. But it started with an attitude. It started with an attitude. So then, for the rest of the way, What's our question? Is my attitude the problem? So your point number one, everyone has, <laughs> everyone has an attitude. Amen. Well, let me, let me help the church out. Some, some of us had an attitude because we couldn't park on the hill today. I always park on the hill. This is my favorite spot. They having an event today. They, they kindly asked us to not park up there just this Sunday. So we can't even be inconvenienced just a Sunday. We get an attitude. Come on, somebody. Y'all pray with me. I hit somebody with that one. Holy Ghost. Keep, keep moving, Holy Ghost. So we all, we all have an attitude. And I'm hearing the married couple, the pastor tell me something I don't know. I've been married a long time. Been dealing with this attitude a long time. But see, right now we ain't dealing with the spouse attitude. We, we dealing, right now we're dealing with our own, uh, our own attitude. Now, here's the thing that may get you. Um, there's only two. It's, your attitude is going to be right or wrong. Yeah. It's only going to be right or it's going to be wrong. There's no third option. Pastor, um, how, how, do you, how do you know that? Because it tells us right here in Philippians, let this mind, or do you, or you must have, you must have the same attitude that Christ had. So if he's holy, if he's righteous, if he is without sin, then his attitude was right. And we know opposite. So if his attitude was right and my attitude does not line up with his attitude, then my attitude is wrong. So, so this will change how you live. I, I really want to emphasize that your attitude is going to affect your behavior. I, I remember a ball player was so toxic that um, the coach, he, he was having such a negative effect on the team. Uh, and he was very good, very talented. Uh, but he was, he was a, 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 a real toxic in the locker room, and he was destroying the team. The coach said, we would rather lose every game 
than keep you on the team. And, and so I don't care if we tank the season, you being on this team, you got to go. We got to cut you. And, and if we have to lose every game because we cut you, we're going to be better off. And, and, and so attitudes, it, it, it affects behavior. And if I have a bad attitude, it's going to cause me to have bad behavior. As a matter of fact, uh, 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 ha having the wrong attitude uh, is fatal. It's really like putting poison uh, in your body because the children of Israel, their attitude caused not only them, but their children had to wander in the, in the wilderness for 40 years. Their children didn't sin. Their children didn't, they didn't murmur and complain. But the parents did. And because of the parents' sin, then God caused the children to have to wander 40 years too. And they didn't come out of the wilderness until the last parent died. And when the last parent died, now Joshua take them into the promised land but I had to wait 40 years to get here because of mama and dad. Because of their attitude, I'm suffering right now. That's why it's so important that I'm letting you know that your attitude is going to affect behavior. And it could affect uh, generation, generational behavior if you have an attitude that's wrong. I, if I really love Jesus, I ought to be willing to change. And I ought to be willing to change the way that I think. Thoughts have a, they have, it's a device, they, it's a plan for a thought. A thought ain't just roaming around your head for nothing. The, the thought comes with an agenda. And so that's why the scripture says you have, to, you have to take every thought captive and do what? Cast it down or bring it, under, uh, bring it under the obedience of Christ. In other words, when a thought comes in, if this, this thing it has an agenda, it's going to do something. It's going to cause me to have an attitude that's right or wrong. And if it's causing me to have a wrong attitude, I've got to cast that thing down. I, I've got to listen. I can't hold on to it. And so everyone, uh, everyone has uh, an, an attitude. Um, make sure that you check your attitude. And I, I say this to the people that, uh, that serve here. You know, if you had a bad week, you had a bad day, Check your attitude at the door. Don't bring that in here. Amen. Uh, because you can do that. You can check it. You can change it. And that's, that's the whole uh, reason of preaching the gospel. Um, and so everyone has an attitude. Your point number two, uh, a right attitude is shaped by the word of God. It is shaped by the word of God. God said this, uh, I'm the potter. You the clay. And I can shape it. I can mold it. I can make it into however I want to make it and mold it and shape it into. And so, so our attitude is shaped by uh, the word of God. Here is a great scripture in Hebrews. Go to Hebrews uh, chapter number uh, 4. And when y'all get there, say, amen. Is this making sense? Yes. He Hebrews chapter number four. Uh, look at verse number 12. For the word of God is what? Quick, or the word uh, translates into what? Alive. So the word of God is alive and what? Powerful and what? sharper than any two-edged sword. 
So what does a sword do? It's cutting, right? And if it's a sharp sword, uh, you, don't, you, don't, you just have to hit it one time. <laughs> you ain't got a saw. <laughs> it's, 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 when it's cutting, it's cutting, right? Um, piercing even to the dividing asunder. Look at how sharp the word of God is. Of what? Soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow. Wow. And is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. And so, 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 so every part of your trinity, it is shaped by the word of God. You don't have to wonder how to live. You can read the word of God and it will tell you how to live. Amen. And, and so you, you don't have to wonder, am I thinking correctly? Read the word of God and the word of God will tell you how to think correctly. My thinking has been my downfall. And so that's why what this is, it, 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 it seems foolish to the, to, the, to the wise and to the learned that a man gets up and uh, he opens the Bible and he starts to read and he starts to teach and he starts to preach. What you don't understand is a sower went out to sow some seed. And some fell by the wayside. Some, some fell among thorns. Some, some listen, some, some seeds fell uh, among the rocks. But then some of the seed fell on good ground. When you wonder why people walk out of here blessed, it's because the word of God came through and started cutting. And when the word started cutting, now I start seeing things clear. I'm not confused now. Now I separate my body, my mind, and my spirit. So I know now that my flesh is tripping, but my spirit is all right. I know that my mind is playing tricks on me, but my spirit is all right. All I need to do now is change my mind. Because it's affecting my attitude, which in turn causes my behavior. to be altered. And so in 2 Corinthians 10, uh, 5, uh, let's, let's go ahead and turn it. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, uh, verse number 5, casting down what? Imagination. Every what? High thing that does what? Exalt itself against the knowledge of God and bring it into what? Captivity. What? Every thought every thought to the obedience of Christ. You ain't qualified to choose. So he said, I want you to bring every thought. Because we can, you know, the church, the church when Jesus was crucified, uh, and they asked, do you want Barabbas, a robber, to be released? Or do you want Jesus, a righteous man, to be released? Do you know who chose a robber? It wasn't sinners. The church said, we want Barabbas. And then when they didn't have enough in agreement, they start recruiting other church members. And said, we'd rather have release a robber than a righteous man. And they thought they were right. We'll take a robber. And so what I'm trying to say, just because it comes from the church don't mean it came from God. But, but when your mind ain't renewed, when, when you're not thinking right, when you, have, when, you, when you have the wrong attitude, you can go along with the mob and think you're okay. As a matter of fact, the mob uh, came after Paul, and the church lied on Paul. 
saying that Paul had done all these things and Paul hadn't done anything but preach the gospel. They could never find him guilty because he didn't do nothing wrong. Can we say amen to that? And so, church, I'm, I'm like Paul uh, in this regard. I don't want you to be ignorant. I don't want you to be ignorant of the enemy's devices because we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Your enemy, you can't see him. But against principalities and powers, wickedness in where high places. And so stop fighting the wrong enemy. Uh, your point number last, and I'll be done. A right attitude is shaped by the word of God, point two. A wrong attitude is shaped by self. It is shaped by, it's shaped by self. Um, self will get you in a lot of trouble. Self, 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 stay, stay out too long. <laughs> self, 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 have one too many. Yeah, self, self, <laughs> yeah, self, 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 lust after the wrong things. Paul said, in my flesh dwells no good thing. And so self, self will cause you to think that you're right. There is a way that what? Seems right. But the end thereof is is destruction. Self will mess you up. We read in Philippians, don't be what? Selfish. Self, self thinks about self. All right, let, let, let's, let's, can we do a self test? If somebody brought you a picture, a photo, with 20 people on it, and you in that photo, who you gonna look at first? Who you gonna look at first? And, and if you're like my wife, you know, taking, we, we take a whole lot of selfies. <laughs> Yesterday, on the way home, Kaiser FaceTimed us and uh, I forgot what y'all were talking about, but you say, send me some pictures, talking to our daughter. And then Kaiser came in the background. Yeah, G-Mommy loves pictures. <laughs> she loves pictures. And so, yeah, and so we, we do selfies. We take pictures of our self. And if the self ain't right, we got to keep taking it. <laughs> keep taking it until it get right. I just take one, you know, hey, that, that'll work, I'm good. <laughs> Are y'all finding yourself in here? Yeah. And you gonna find your Self. So a wrong attitude is shaped by self, and I reason uh, with myself, and I start thinking to myself, and then sometimes I start talking to myself, and sometimes I start persuading myself. Some people talk their way, they self out of coming to church today. You were on your way, self got in the way. And the team, the, I'm, I'm going to tell you now, the team you rooting for ain't going to win. So you might as well just came in the house of the Lord. Came on the church first. Self talked us out of it.
<laughs> yeah, self, self will get you, and, and let me tell you, my hand is raised because I know about the dangers of, of self, which is why God gave us the Holy Spirit. Because he won't ever be selfish. As a matter of fact, he's going to point out uh, stuff in self that's going to get us in trouble. And so what I have to do is I have to renew my mind. There, I have a lot of opinions. I have a lot of things that I can say. I, I feel like I'm well-versed in, in just a lot of different uh, areas that, that pertain to life and society and even doctrine and, and, and biblical history. Uh, but that self want to say it, and then the Holy Spirit won't let, self, won't let self get in the way and say it. And it takes a lot of restraint for me to do that, but he gave us what? Self-control. If I can't control myself, do I belong to him? If I can't control my mouth, do I really belong to him? If my tongue is out of control, do I really belong to him? Am, am I really surrendered and submitted to him if I got to post everything? If I got to tell everybody what I think? Do I really belong and am I really submitted to him? Because you can't tell me the Holy Ghost told you to say that. Yeah. Self did. Yeah. An attitude did. And, and remember, church, an attitude is a feeling. Let, and let me say this, especially to my women folk. No, for, for real. I'm, I'm honest. Don't let people make you feel bad about your feelings and about your emotions. Because guess what? God gave you the feeling. He just wants your feelings to be right. So don't apologize for feeling and having emotions because they, that came from God. And so he understands how you feel. The Bible says he can be touched with the what? Feelings of our infirmities. So, so, so an attitude is a, is a feeling, it's an emotion. Just make sure that it's shaped by the word of God. It has to be shaped by uh, the word of God. We're going to finish with here and close right here. Um, in uh, Luke chapter 9. Now these guys uh, have been with Jesus. These are his disciples. And some of the closest disciples. And in verse 46, there said, there arose a what? Reasoning. Y'all in Luke 9? Did I tell you that? Luke 9, 46. There arose a what? A reasoning. That's the first problem. Among them, which should be greatest. So now, their attitude <laughs> is going in a different direction. Who gonna, who, which one of us going to be the greatest? And so they started to reason. They started to think uh, among themselves. But thank God they had Jesus with them. Jesus, perceiving the thought of their heart, took a child, set him by him. He said, whosoever shall receive this child in my name receives me. Whosoever receives me receives him that sent me. For he that is least among you all, the same shall be great. I don't want y'all to reason and have the wrong attitude about who's great in the kingdom because the greatest in the kingdom is going to be the greatest servant. It's going to be the one that's the most humble. So don't get it twisted. So just because you got a lot of money don't mean jack. Not in the kingdom. It's not measured the same. My time is up, and I thank you for yours. Can we thank God? Tell somebody, hold your peace.